part two of the chapter four practice test I think is harder than part one. Just the, comp the, the concepts are just a little bit trickier. The first four problems have to do with picking two items out of a, a group. And when you're picking two items from a group, you can do it without replacement or you can do it with replacement. If in the instructions you see the words without replacement when you're picking two items from a group, the denominators need to go down by one. So without we'll say the denominator goes down by one. When we get to the next problem we're going to be selecting two items, different items, but we're selecting two items. When you're selecting two items with replacement, the denominator stays the same. From one fraction to the next. So let me just jump in and, and try 15 and 16. So 15 and 16 say two cards are selected from a deck of 52 cards without replacement, meaning I take one card out, look at it, and put it, put it away. Don't put it back in the deck, and then I go back and reach in and take a second card out. Now I'm asked to find the probability that both in number 15 are red. I'm going to form two fractions. One's going to be for the first card, and in this case the first card needs to be red. And then the second card also needs to be red. The denominator for the first fraction is going to be 52 because a deck of cards generally has 52 cards. The denominator for my second fraction goes down by 1 because I'm assuming after I take this red card out that I don't put it back, then I reach in and get a second card. So my denominators need to go by, down by 1. The numerator is going to be the number of cards that have the desired characteristic. And in question 15, both cards need to be red. So the first numerator is going to be 26 because there's 13 hearts and 13 diamonds and those are the red cards. So the first fraction is going to be 26 over 52 because of the 52 cards in the deck, 26 of them are red. Now I'm assuming I've taken one of these red cards out. I don't know which red card I took, but one of the red cards has been removed from the deck, and then I'm going back into this deck now that only has 51 cards, and I'm trying to get a red card. Well, because I've taken one card away and it's red, the number of red cards left in my deck now are going to be 25. It's going to go down by one because the card that I picked out on my first try that I didn't put back so I went down to 51, a 51 card deck. This 51 card deck only has 25 red cards because one of the red cards is removed. So the second fraction is going to be 25 over 51. To do this on my calculator, to write this as a reduced fraction, like it asks, I'm going to form the fraction 26 over 52 in a parentheses and the fraction 25 over 51 in a parentheses. Put them next to each other. That, that in, there's the multiplication of those two fractions. I'm going to hit enter and then math, and then enter, and enter. And it gives me an answer of 25 over, 25 over 102 for my answer. Question 16, the first card of the two that I'm picking needs to be a four. The second card needs to be a 3. From my deck of cards, for the first card, the de de before I've taken a card out, my deck has 52 cards. The first denominator is going to be 52. Because I'm not taking the card out, I'm assuming I'm taking a 4 out the first time, when I go the second time, there's only going to be 51 cards left in my deck. To do this probability, I go through my deck of cards and look for the number of cards that have my characteristics. Well, from the first go, I need the card to be a 4. And in my deck of cards, there are four fours. So the first probability is going to be 4 over 52, because in this deck of 52 cards, there's four fours. I'm going to assume now 
that I pulled out one of these fours, but I don't know which one. For my second card, I need it to be a three. And because the first card that I pulled out was a four, when I go to pull my second card out, I only have 51 cards left because this deck of cards started with 52 cards. I pulled out one of the fours. So the denominator is going to be 51 because there's only 51 cards left. The numerator is going to be four because in this deck of cards, there's still four threes because of what I pulled out on the first time was a four. So the denominator of the, the numerator of the second fraction is going to be four. This is the four threes that are left after you pull a four out and don't put it back. Yeah, I have no desire to do this by hand, so let's do my calculator. 4 divided by 52 times 4 divided by 51. And then math, enter, enter. And my calculator tells me the answer for this needs to be 4 and 663. Questions 17 and 18 are similar problems, but the denominator doesn't increment down. The difference between 17 and 18 isn't so much that in 17 and 18 I'm pulling marbles from a bag. It's the fact that when I pull a marble out, I'm putting it back in. So as I read this, two marbles are drawn from a bag that has five blue, three red, and two purple marbles with replacement, which means after I pull a marble out, I'll look at it, I'll put it back in the bag, shuffle them back up, mix them back up, and pick out another marble. So to do my probabilities, the denominator is going to be, stay the same. So for these picking two cards, picking two marbles, I need to form two fractions. For the first fraction, I want the probability of getting a red from this bag of 10 marbles, because there's five blue, three red, and two purple. The numerator of my first fraction, denominator of my first fraction is going to be 10, because this bag has five blue plus three red plus two purple. It has 10 marbles. And I want the first marble to be red. The numerator of this first fraction is going to be 3, because of the 10 marbles, 3 of them are red. The denominator was 10. When I go to the second fraction, I'm assuming that I that red marble that I pulled out, I put back in. So there's still going to be 10 marbles to choose from, and still all 3 of them are red. So each of the fractions are going to be the same. The denominators are going to stay the same because I still have all 10 marbles to pull from. Whereas in the last problem, I didn't. I pulled a card out, a deck that started with 52 cards. After I pulled a card out, there were 51 cards left, and I didn't put it back. That's why the denominator incremented down by one, because I didn't put the card back. In this problem, I pull a marble out, I look at it, I put it back. So the denominators aren't going to go down. They're going to stay the same. This reduces to 9 and 100. I don't need my calculator for this. For 18, I need the first marble to be not red, the second marble to be red. For the first go, to get a not red marble, there's 5 blue and 2 purple. I'm going to add those up. 7 of the 10 marbles in the bag aren't red. I don't care which one of those seven I pull out, I'm putting it back in. And the second fraction is for the number of red marbles that are there when all the marbles are in the bag and there's three of the ten. Multiply those out and I'll get an answer of 21 in 100. Problems 19, 20, and 21 are a little bit tricky. They're conditional probability. So in problems 19 through 21, I'm assuming that a pair of dice are rolled and the sum of the dice is recorded. When you get your test, this sample space is going to be given to you on the test. So when I roll a pair of dice, the first dice can be a 1, the second dice could be a 1. If you add up the two dice, you'd get a 2. Uh, the first dice could be a 4, the second dice could be a 5. If you add up the totals on the faces, the sum could be a 9. This is going to be given to you. What I'm asked to do in question 19 
is find the probability that the sum of the dice is 3 given the second dice is 1. My instructions to this say create a reduced sample space. To create a reduced sample space for problem 19, I'm going to go through my sample space and find only the numbers in the sample space that meet the criteria. And the criteria is the second dice is a 1. So of the items in my sample space, when I go to answer question 19, I'm only specifically going to look at that group of numbers that I have circled. These are the only elements in the sample space that have the second dice of 1. Everything else that I just scratched out because I don't want to look at doesn't have the second dice as a 1. So from these six items that have the second dice as a 1, what's the probability that the sum is less than 3? Less than 3 means not equal to 3. And of this items that I circled, there's one item that has a sum of 2, which is less than 3. Every other item has a sum of 3 or bigger. The fraction here for problem 19 is going to be 1 in 6 because of the 6 items in the sample space that I'm focused on, given the second dice is a 1, there's 6 items and one of them fits the criteria. When I go to do problem 20, I'm only, only, only going to look at the portion of the sample space that fits the criteria. So I want the probability that the sum is exactly 4 given the first dice is a 2. Well, the, these items in my sample space are the ones that have the first dice a 2. I'm going to look at those. This is creating my reduced sample space. And every other thing that's in this sample space, I'm not going to look at. Because everything that I'm crossing out right now, the first dice isn't a 2. So when I go to do problem 20, I'm only looking at those to answer the question. So from those six items, 2, 1, 2, 2, all the way up to 2, 6, what's the probability that the sum is 4? Well, the only one of these that has a sum of 4 is the 2, 2. There are six different items that I have boxed here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And of those six, one of them has the first dice of 2. So that probability is going to be 1 in 6. When I get down to do number 21, it says, what's the probability that the sum is greater than, uh, is greater than, greater than, or equal to 8, given a double have been rolled? So a double is like a 1-1 a one, one is a double, a 2-2 two, two is a double, a 3-3 three, three is a double. So a double meaning the numbers match each other. So in this sample space of 36 items, there's not so many doubles. So what I'm going to do is only look at the items in the sample space that are doubles. Because I was told, um, given a double had been rolled. So from these num numbers that are doubles, I want to look for all the ones that have sums greater than or equal to 8. And there's a sum of 2, no good, sum of 4, sum of 6. Sum, or, sum of 8, that's greater than or equal to 8. I'm going to count it. Sum of 10, that's greater than or equal to 8. I'm going to count it. Sum of 12, that's greater than or equal to 8. I'm going to count it. Of the six doubles that are in the sample space, three of them have sums that are greater than or equal to 8. The answer to problem 21 is going to be 3 divided by 6. And I'm going to reduce that to 1 and 2. For the next problem, somehow I didn't hit the page break at the right place. This table right here has 200 first grade students were asked if they had a cell phone and it separated between boys and girls. Some of the boys had a cell phone, some didn't. Some of the girls had a cell phone, some, some didn't. And I'm supposed to answer conditional probability questions. To do conditional probability questions, um, they're a little tricky. So if I go to do problem, Ugh, my page breaking is all messed up. Problem 22. What's the probability, if I pick one of these 200 first graders at random, that the child selected has a cell phone given the child is a girl? This given the child is a girl tells me that when I'm doing problem 22, I'm only looking at the numbers in the girl row and I'm ignoring 
I'm going to ignore all these. And I'm going to ignore all these. I know the child's a girl, so I'm only looking at the numbers in the row that says girl. And I want the probability that the child has a cell phone. Well, of the girls, 35 have a cell phone, 75 don't. If I'm just looking at the girls, the number of girls with cell phones are 35, and the total number of girls are 110. Always when I form fractions, the numerator is the number with the desired characteristic, the denominator is the number I can choose from. I'm choosing from the 110 girls how many of them have cell phones. Let me reduce this on my calculator by going 35 divided by 110. Math, enter, enter. And I'm going to write 7 over 22 for an answer. When I go to do problem 23, it says, what's the probability that the child's a boy given they don't have a cell phone? When I go to do problem 23, I'm only looking at the kids that don't have a cell phone. So as I go to do problem 23, the only numbers I'm going to search for are those. And now I could actually physically get rid of these because I don't need them anymore. So I'm only going to look at those numbers for problem 23 because I'm told the kid doesn't have a cell phone. Now, amongst those kids that don't have a cell phone, I want to find the number of boys. The probability that a child's a boy, if I'm only looking at this column, there's 60 boys of the 135 students. And let me just reduce that fraction. So 60 divided by 135, math, enter, enter. My answer is going to be 4 over 9. Yuck. So the next group of problems, the numbers can get ridiculously large. This has a telephone number with 10 digits. Let me try to think of mine. So this is going to be the first number, second, third, fourth, eighth, ninth, tenth. So there's all 10 digits for a phone number. Question 24 wants to know how many different telephone numbers are possible given the restrictions that are in the problem. For these how many questions, I don't need to form a fraction because it doesn't ask the word probability. Probability means fractions. How many means make dashes and multiply. So how many telephone numbers are possible if neither the first or the fourth number can be a zero or one? This tells me that the first number can be the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It can't be a 0 or a 1. The fourth number can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So the first number can only be one of eight different numbers. The fourth number can only be eight one of eight different numbers because the first or the fourth number can't be a zero or a one. For the rest of the numbers, there aren't any restrictions. The rest of the numbers, like the eighth number, can be any of the numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And if I count those up, there's 10 different numbers. All the rest of the numbers, because there's no restrictions, they can be any of the numbers 0 through 9. And that's 10 different digits. The numbers 1 through 9, and then you add 0 in, and you get 10 different digits. So for each of the possible digits that make up a phone number, I put numbers above that specific number. And then I'm going to multiply all these numbers together. So the first and the fourth number got 8, because they couldn't be 0 and 1. The rest have all 10 digits. And so I'm just going to multiply this out the best I can. 8 times 10 times 10 times 8. And that gets 6 tens. Times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 6. 8, 10, 10, 8. I think that's right. And so my answer to this is going to be 6, 4, how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh shoot, 3, 6, 8 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
comma, comma, comma. So that's six billion four hundred thousand different phone numbers that are possible with those restrictions. Twenty-five works with social security numbers. Um, I guess everybody's social security number has nine digits. And to answer a question, how many social security numbers are possible, given some restrictions, I need to make nine dashes. So a social security number has nine digits. When I did a ten telephone number with ten digits, I made ten dashes. Separate it by time signs. They're getting smaller because I'm running out of room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine dashes there for the nine numbers in a social security number. I'm told the first three digits must be five, two, and six. So the first number can be five, the second number can be two, the third number can be six, and for the remaining digits, repetitions allowed and there aren't any restrictions. So the rest of the numbers can be any of the numbers from zero through nine. I'm allowed to reuse a number. They could be any of these 10 numbers. The first number needs to be a five. There's only one choice for it. The second number has to be a two. There's only one choice for it. The third number has to be a six. There's only one choice for it. But for the rest of the numbers, there aren't any restrictions. And it says repetition is allowed, so I can keep using the same number over and over again. For each of the next spots, there's going to be 10 different numbers to choose from. And if I multiply this, I really just have to multiply the six tens. I don't have to worry about the ones. This I could actually do in my head. It's not that hard to do. One, two, three, four, five. I think I already have six. And that's going to be 1 million. When you multiply by tens, you just add zeros. I'm multiplying by six tens, so I get a 1 followed by six zeros. So the number of Social Security numbers that are possible with a 526 prefix are 1 million. 26 wants me to make license plates. And it's asking me how many license plates are possible with a certain characteristic. And these have to have two letters followed by four digits or numbers. So I'm going to make my license plate to have my first letter, my second letter, my first number, my second number, my third number, and my fourth number. And let me look at the problem here. It says the first letter must be a vowel. The first number must be a one. Let me get those in. For the first letter being a vowel, it can be A, E, I, O, R, U. So there's five different letters the first letter can be. The first number has to be a one. There's only one number the first number can be. It says repetition is not permitted which means once I use a number or a letter up, I can't use it again, which means somehow I have to increment by d down by one. Normally, when I'm asked to put a letter and there aren't any restrictions, above the letter I would put 26 because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Because this says repetition is not permitted and I've already used a letter, I have to subtract out any letter that I used and that's gonna tell me how many letters I have to choose for the next spot. So an alphabet has 26 letters. I've already used one of those letters up. It's either A, E, I, O, or U, which means I, I'm not allowed to use it again. For my second letter, there's only going to be 25 letters to choose from. For my first number, it had to be a one. There was only one choice. For my second number, it can be 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. That's going to be nine different numbers it can be. I don't know which of the nine numbers that I'm going to choose for that number, but once I choose it, I can't use it again because repetition isn't, isn't permitted. When repetition isn't permitted, you have to go down or increment down, get the numbers get smaller. So for this next number, the one is gone so it's not in this list, and another number from this list gets removed. The list started at 9 because it didn't have the 1 in it. I pull 1 from this list because I'm not allowed to repeat it again. The next number is going to be 8. 
I don't know which number I've picked the second time, but I'm not allowed to repick it again. So of the nine numbers that were choose for this, I lost one was only used, there were only eight available for this, and then only seven available for my last one. When it says repetition is not permitted, you generally go down by one. It doesn't show up so much here. I did really go down by one because I took one of the vowels away, but it doesn't show up as nicely as it does here, the down by one. So let me just multiply these together, and that's going to be my answer to my how many. So 5 times 25 times 1 times 9 times 8 times 7. My answer to this is just going to be there's 63,000 license plates possible that have that look. Another license plates problems. Same set of license plates having two letters followed by four numbers. And for this particular one, I'm no longer worried about the first letter being a vowel or the first number being a one. There aren't any restrictions of the, that from the last problem that carry over to this problem. The only thing for this problem, repetition of numbers is not permitted. Repetition of letters is permitted. I'm not worried about the first letter being a vowel anymore. So an alphabet has 26 letters. For the first letter, there's no restrictions. It can be any of the 26 letters. Because repetition of letters is permitted, the second letter can still be any one of those 26 letters. For the numbers, there's 10 numbers, numbers 1 through 9 plus 0. Repetition isn't permitted. This means I have to go down by 1. So once I pick a number for the first number, I can't use it for the second number, so there's only 9 numbers to choose from. Once I've picked the first two numbers for the first and the second number, the third number, there's one less number to choose from, and then one less for the fourth. When repetition is not permitted, that's when you have to go down by one. So this is the reason I, for the letters, or for the numbers, I go down by one. And then for the letters, I don't go down by one. So is permitted, you don't go down by one. Not permitted, you do go down by one. And let me get my answer here just by going 26 times 26 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. The answer to this is 3,407,000 in 40. One last problem. And I think I wound up changing it at some point in the past, but didn't change it on this sheet. So let me just shorten this word to make it a little bit easier actually to do the counting. So this asks me how many ways can the letters of distinguish be array arranged. And to do this, we form a fraction. In the numerator, it's the total number of letters factorial. divided by, in the denominator, each duplicate factorial. So when I go through this problem, the numerator is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 factorial, because in the word distinguish, there's 11 letters. The denominator, I start looking for duplicate letters. There's going to be, because there are three i's, a three factorial for the three i's. And there are two s's. And for the two s's, I'm going to put a two factorial. I don't think there's any other letters that repeat. There's only one D, one T, one N, one G, one U, and one H. So this is the fraction that's going to tell me how many different ways I can rearrange the word distinguish to have it look different. I'm going to put everything in a, oh gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do everything. Let me do 11 factorial first. I'm going to go 11, hit my math key, 
arrow right to prob and go down to number four for factorial. So I'm going to go 11 factorial divided by, and then in the denominator, I'm going to do three factorial, three math probability factorial times two math probability factorial. And that should do well. So that's 11 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial. The answer to this is going to be 3,326,400 different ways that I can write distinguish and have it look different. All right, so that's every everything that you need to have perfected. If you can do all 28 problems between the two practice tests, should be completely fine and ready for our test over chapter 4.